Hi everyone, go to Luke here and going to share a uh, device that I've been uh, testing which is not my own uh, design but is from an experimenter at the OverUnity forum uh, which goes by the username of Floor and a link to the uh, forum topic where this video and discussion about these uh, experiments and tests results are going to be posted that is in the description box below this video so there's a link there that I put that you can just click and it'll bring you to that forum topic so <clears throat> what uh, Floor has uh, found and has been researching is that uh, here are two uh, ceramic magnets for instance so the pole is from face to face from this face to that face and if you take two of these magnets, you put them together like that, and you twist this magnet here, you will find that there's a, 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 there's a torque. It wants to return this way here. So that's basically all what the device is about, is just this torque. But when you um, pull it away here, it is very easy to pull away, yet there is torque happening in this dimension. So he was curious and decided to set up a uh, apparatus to measure how much torque it takes to bring this forward and away from the magnet and how much torque you have in this dire direction, in like the counterclockwise direction. Or you can go the clockwise direction. It doesn't matter what direction you go, but uh, it's interesting to study how much force it takes to remove the magnet from here and compare it to the force that it turns here. So you can just take two magnets and do that kind of test there in your hands and you're going to feel that it's pretty easy to remove the magnet away this way and it seems to give you more torque that way. So that's a quick way of uh, testing it but yet you need to set up a device to really accurately measure and that's what he did and I really believe his measurements uh, are accurate and for the sake of the argument I've built a test device that is similar in the principle of his except uh, he used basically these uh, kinds of ceramic magnets I've used neodymium magnets and uh, went about it a little different way instead of being a, uh, a rectangle magnet like this uh, mine I've used a uh, ring neo magnet so that is a four inch ring magnet by about one inch width here this dimension here is about one inch and this uh, particular, uh, it's one-eighth uh, thick, one-eighth of an inch thick. And this particular uh, neomagnet is magnetized like these ceramic magnets are from face to face. And um, I wanted to create a magnet, I uh, really had these magnets for another project, and had the, uh, modified them at that time as well. What uh, I do is I cut them in half with a diamond, a very fine diamond, uh, thin diamond uh, rotor. I cut these exactly in half and basically I flip the other half around so each half moon so one it would be a north pole and the other one the other half would be a south pole. So in, in, in essence I create the same kind of thing here except a huge, a much larger amount of surface area and I believe this uh, effect really surface area is going to really dominate, dominate this uh, effect. And I will show you how I've uh, put it together. So basically you have two uh, parts. One part is a movement of uh, in and out function. So here I am moving it in and out. Okay. And it's a very small amount in and out. Here I put a black tape here on this movement that way in and out. And that's five-eighths of an inch moving in and out. And that's the full stroke that is needed to engage and disengage the machine. So basically at this point here we engage it, at this point we disengage it. And what is engaging and disengaging at this uh, side here is basically this is on a crankshaft, okay, which I've put a arm on it, okay, and there you see the movement. So it's close to being like a 90 degrees, a little less than 90 degrees uh, movement. And uh, that is my stroke. And I have limiters to stop it here. And obviously I have a limiter here to stop it in this dimension. Then I've added a chart, okay. 
which is all uh, equally divided, okay? And uh, I'll show you what I've, I do with that. So there you see the action this way in and out. And I've drawn here uh, my new magnets that I have on each platter. So you see one magnet there, one magnet there. That is a uh, steel platter that the magnet is you know, on it, obviously, and uh, super glued there and super glued on that side. So this magnet here is actually uh, half this north and the other half is the south. And on this ma uh, platter here, it's the same thing. Now this obviously moves that way, but this one here moves the other way. It moves in a circular motion. And that is all done here. And again, I have another torque chart there, or a position chart. And I've jammed this measuring tape here in there just so uh, I can keep that arm up. So on this side, this is the action that we're, we're getting out of the machine. Okay, and you can see the uh, platter there is now turning. Okay, the machine is not engaged, so it's easy for me to lift it up and down right there. Um, so I'm quite sure the principle is simple, and which is just basically this rotation that's happening here. Okay, this piece here is this one that's on the bottom, which is fixed. So as it moves away, there's no torque here. As this comes in, there's torque. All right, so that's this function, and this upper twist uh, piece is this function here. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put back this tape, and I'm going to show you how I go about uh, determining and doing measurements to find out how much um, torque we uh, get out of this and how much input torque we have to put in to compare the input and the output and to find out if there is an excess uh, amount of uh, work that could be obtained here for the work you put into it. So <clears throat> um, here on this torque arm we're going to use foot-pounds because a lot of people are familiar with foot-pounds um, and basically uh, this is a uh, torque arm that is exactly 12 inches. So this is one foot pound. So if we put a scale here and we pull on the scale and we get one pound, we have one foot pound of torque. So this is precisely measured exactly from the center of the uh, output shaft here to this little uh, pin here that I attach my scale to. And uh, with the scale we pull and we can find out uh, how many foot pounds we have. Now all these divisions, this is from the starting point and this is the distance of travel. This is where it ends and these are all exactly space segments and we can take torque readings here on the output side. Now on the uh, activating side, activating the device to start delivering torque, okay, this is the same idea. However, this one actually uh, moves exactly, I made it exactly twice the distance, okay, than the distance that you have on the uh, output torque arm. And we can just adjust all that in the math, but this is exactly uh, double what is happening at the delivery end. So uh, here as well, I've even, I have a little clip here, it's all aluminum, and I attach my uh, scale and I pull on it, and I have uh, actually uh, 16 divisions here. So we have a 16 division uh, resolution of the different uh, amount of uh, pounds it takes that I take a reading at every uh, interval here. And I've got a little mar paper marker there, or cardboard marker on there, that uh, I stop it and take a reading, stop it, take a reading, stop it, and take a reading. So I'll show you basically how that's done. And this is the scale. So I power my scale on and I let it zero and it's in pounds right now. And now I would attach my scale like this and I would line it up so that it's, you know, straight with that line on there, okay, with a, that, that round circular line here so that the scale is not pulling this way or that way so I have a very accurate reading. 
So I have to zero this scale. Every time I see that red light, that scale has locked into a position. So there it is at zero. And now I start pulling on it, okay? And I bring it to the first section, okay? And there we have, again, it locked. So there we have a, a first reading there of 0.3. And then I go to the next section. And then you see there we have a 0.57 pounds. Next section, 0 0.62, 0 0.61 pounds. You have to kind of go and wait. And keep in mind here, I'm just doing this with one hand here. I used a little bit more accuracy. Uh, I'm just showing you the different positions here and seeing how it works. So on and on, that's exactly what I did 16 times. So every time I uh, get one measurement, okay, of uh, each uh, pole force, then I write it down. So this is exactly uh, what I have. I have 16 divisions here. And I write, this is the engaging mode. So that's to engage it to deliver torque on the other side, like I showed you. So here I had 0.5 and 0 0.54, 0 0.58. It might be a little different than uh, what you just saw here right now, but um, that's because I'm just doing it with one hand here and things might not be quite as accurate. So this is all the data, okay, that I obtain, all the samples if you want, 16 of them, to finally get a figure, and that is a mean figure, so I've put this into a calculator to obtain a mean figure, meaning it's a uh, average, okay? So the pole force average is 0.437 uh, pounds to engage the device. So now it is engaged right now. And if we come here with our scale and we look at the, our output, okay? Now I'm gonna take out this measuring tape, the gem, and now you can see that there's, there's some serious uh, torque here on this side. So I will now turn on the scale and show you the amount of torque. So there we are at zero. And I attach my uh, scale here to that, to that little hook. And I line it up very carefully here, okay? Unfortunately, uh, the scale always goes to that lock position, so I gotta unlock it. So now I have to pull. So here we are uh, pulling on the scale, okay? And we have about 2.35 uh, foot-pounds uh, there on the scale at the first level, okay? Second level, okay, 2.38. Next level, 2.37. Next level, 2.33. Next level, 2.28. Next level, 2.22. So you get the idea, 2.2. So that is the torque. And the torque is pretty well equal uh, throughout this whole uh, stroke here that distance, which is half of the distance from over there. Now, if we go back, and the next step is, since this how has done its work, it's delivered its torque, it stops there. Now, what has to be measured is the disengaging of the device, which is bringing this arm away. So now there is torque here, and it builds up, and as it goes away, and then here at this point, it just, it just falls. <laughs> There's nothing really that's needed, okay? So I'll show you again. Here, we power on the scale in this dimension here, because the scale weighs all this stuff. So now we would hook the scale, and now we're in the disengaging mode, okay? So now we would pull to the first section, okay? And then we see 0.29. And I had 0.28 in the disengaging there. And we'll start up the scale here. Next 
that section there. 0.47 at 0.48. So again, it's the same thing. You just, you know, 0 0.62, 0 0.67, 0 0.64. Now I'm just doing the row roughly by eye here, so it might not m match exactly what's on the paper there. So as you see now, it's taking less and less uh, foot-pounds as it's going to this point here where you see the scale like going basically to zero. And the rest here just, there's nothing measurable. <coughs> so uh, our engaging uh, average took uh, 0.37 uh, pounds, okay, foot-pounds. And our disengaging uh, average took 0.295 foot-pounds. So we've actually put a total, okay, of 0.732 uh, foot-pounds in the device, okay? And then we went and we measured our torque, which is our output uh, uh, torque that we can gain from the input and basically this is what I wrote down. There's all the different uh, measurements. And uh, we have a 2.34 uh, foot-pound uh, average there. Okay, utilizing all that, just like the same method as this. But we have actually only eight samples there that we use because it's half the uh, arc that this one is here. So what I've done is I've taken the 2.34 foot-pounds and divided that by two so that we're comparing our uh, output torque to our input for as far as distance is concerned, of travel distance to do the work. So basically, we're really having 1.17 uh, foot-pound if we would have the same uh, distance here uh, delivered at the front. So, so basically, that is really what we're, uh, we're receiving at our front end. So we would need for this device to see excess energy for the uh, input uh, foot-pound torque to be obviously less than 1.17. And as you can see, it is. It's at uh, 0.732. So we deduct our 0.732 and we find that we have an extra uh, 0.44 uh, foot-pounds uh, from the uh, delivery, from the output, compared to our input, which is basically roughly around a little, just a little over 37% uh, extra uh, on the input, uh, on the output side <clears throat> compared to the work that we've put in on the uh, input. So um, that is uh, fairly accurate and uh, Floor himself has uh, obviously shown that there is a gain uh, out of doing uh, this kind of um, uh, permanent magnet uh, topology. So uh, this is very interesting and encouraging and uh, thanks for watching. Bye now.